So we won't worry too much about fixing up this nullability warning for the process files method because we're going to be deleting this timer in just a moment. What we're going to do is come back to the files to process class and instead of this concurrent dictionary which we get from this namespace, we're going to make use of the system.runtime.caching namespace. We're going to change the type of this files field from concurrent dictionary to memory cache and to get access to a new memory cache, we're going to reference memory cache.default. To get access to the memory cache, we need to go and add a NuGet package to this project. And that's the system.runtime.caching package. We'll just install that and close NuGet. We can now come back to the program file and delete this timer. And in the created and changed events here, we'll replace this call with a call to an add to cache method, which we'll create in just a moment. And we'll do the same thing in this file changed event handler. We'll come down to the bottom here and delete this process files method because it will no longer be called by a timer. And instead, we're going to create the add to cache method that's being called from the event handlers. This method takes the full path to the file. Inside this method, we're going to be adding entries to the memory cache. To do this, the first thing we need to do is create a cache item, and to get access to this, we'll add a using directive to system.runtime.caching. I'll just hit enter to add that. And as the constructor parameters here, we're specifying the full path for both the key and the value of this cache item. When we add an item to the memory cache, we need to specify a cache item policy. This is basically how the cached item will behave. One of the properties we can set on this cache item policy is a method to be executed when the item is removed from the cache. In this case, we're going to create a process file method in just a moment. The other property that we're going to set on this cache item policy is the expiration for this cached item. Or in other words, how will this item be removed from the cache? In this case, we're going to specify a sliding expiration with a value of two seconds. So if this cached item hasn't been accessed or updated within two seconds, it will be removed from the cache and the process file method called. There's a slight caveat to this, which I'll discuss in just a moment. So now we have a cache item and a cache item policy, we can add it to the memory cache instance. Once again, we'll access the static files to process class, access the static memory cache files field, and then call the add method, passing in the cache item and also the cache item policy. We now need to create the process file method, which gets executed when an item is removed from the cache. When an item is removed from the cache, we want to start processing it. This process file method takes a cache entry removed arguments object as a parameter, We'll just output this text to the console window, telling us that this cache item key was removed, just so we can see what's going on in the console window. We can now check if the reason for the item being removed from the cache was that it expired. Create the file processor, passing in the key for the cache item, which contains the path to the file, and then calling its process method as we've done before. But if the removed reason was anything other than expired, we'll output this warning text to the console window. Let's build this and the build succeeds. As we've done previously, we'll come back to File Explorer here and delete the backup and complete directories, and we'll also copy data1.txt into the input directory here before we head back to Visual Studio and run the application. Once again, we'll go and make some changes to data1.txt in WordPad, and go and save those changes. We'll still get two changed events, but notice now we're getting more than a two second delay until this file is processed. That's because internally memory cache only checks every 20 seconds for expired items. So after a few more seconds, we should see data1.txt processed, which we do. Let's go and process another file now. This time we'll choose data2.txt and paste that into the input directory. We can see here that we've got one created event and multiple changed events. And after a short delay, we should see the file processed, which we do. We can see the cache item removal message here, telling us that the cache item was removed because it expired. Let's see what happens if we try and copy multiple files now. I'm actually going to select all of these input files, copy them, and then paste them into the input directory. 
we can see we've got all of these events added to the memory cache, and after a short delay, we'll start processing all of these files. We're actually going to get an exception though. Notice we're getting this file not found exception, telling us it could not find data3.txt in the processing directory. Let's just stop this. The reason we're getting this error is because of this code here, where we're deleting the in progress directory once we've finished processing a file. So let's just fix this by commenting out this code. But if the in progress directory is created every time we start processing, if it doesn't already exist, how come we're getting this error? The reason this is happening is that now we're getting multiple files processed in parallel at the same time because multiple expired cache items are being processed at the same time. The processing of one file deletes the directory and so another file can't be copied to it because it no longer exists. I'm showing you this to reiterate the need for testing around file handling and processing code. So now we've commented out this code, let's go and clean up these data files, we'll delete everything in the input directory and also backup, complete, and processing. Let's run the application once again, and as before, we'll copy all of these files into the input directory. Once again, we get all of the events, and after a short while, we can see all of the files processed. As we can see here, we haven't yet implemented CSV file processing. We'll do this later in the course. Both the concurrent dictionary approach and this caching approach introduce a time delay between file system watcher events and the processing of files. This kind of delay can help deal with problems associated with long or incremental writes or updates of files to the watched directory, essentially giving the operating system time to complete the file operation before we try and process the file. This kind of delay can also help prevent the exception we saw earlier in the module with the another process is using the file type error. The final change we're going to make to this application is to start processing existing files when the application starts up.